Hello and welcome back to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. Today it's the turn of the Vauxhall Cavalier Mark 1. <laughs> Welcome back, and of course, if you are into car brochures, please do subscribe because this will be the channel for you. So, back to today's subject the Vauxhall Cavalier Mark 1, launched at the 1975 London Motor Show in Earl's Court. It was based on the existing Opel Ascona B and uh, Opel Manta B. This particular brochure is an early one as well. It is dated September 75, so it is showing the early cars. So let's have a look at the brochure now. So here it is, the Vauxhall Cavalier Mark 1. Let me just move my tea out of the way. A couple of issues today. I do have a bit of a cold, so I apologize for that. And Mr. The Cat is in a very attention-seeking mood, so we'll we'll see how we get on. Like I say, uh, this car was uh, launched at the 1975 London Motor Show at Earl's Court. Its main competitor would have been the Ford Cortina Mark III. Now, the launch car actually at the uh, London Motor Show was a yellow um, Vauxhall Cavalier GL four-door. And I do believe this may well have been the launch car at the... Uh, london motor show it certainly looks very much like it it had the larger engine the 1896 engine so this may well have been that first launch car like i said this is an early brochure dated september 75 the cavalier like i say based on the orpa ascona b but with this I think more attractive front styling, more of an Opel Manta styling at the front with this sloped um, uh, arrangement. And I think it looks a lot more as a much more modern car for the time than the Ford Cortina, which it was really battling at. And of course, the Cortina being a huge seller at the time. Which was better? Well, we'll talk about that. And of course, I'd love to hear your comments as well. Anyway, let's open the brochure up and see what it's got to offer us. So inside, um, first of all, it's showing that Cavalier GL. Like I say, probably the car at, uh, first shown at the motor show. The Cavalier GL in a very attractive yellow colour. And a very plain, but certainly modern looking for the time uh, interior. And we'll just have a quick look at this text on the side as well so strangely like i said this brochure starts off showing the higher model the gl even though it mentions the l here as well but it says the most refined cavalier you can buy you get of course all the luxuries and comforts of the cavalier l and you get more one quick glam glance at the appointments will indicate how much more. For example, you find the seats upholstered with plush velour fabrics. You'll find rich tufted carpets running wall to wall and even partly up the doors. You look at the elegant quartz activated clock, a cigar lighter and front, front ashtray, both illuminated, illuminated glove box and more. And you look back through an anti-dazzle rear view mirror. Outside, even more distinction. Uh, additional brightly reflective mouldings, smart black waist mouldings, styled sports wheels. Under the body, you get the highly responsive 1.9 litre engine or the more economical 1.6. Cavalier GL. You don't have to be rich to purchase one. <laughs> Just smart. So there we go, that is the GL. It's at a time where even the highest spec models have very basic things that you would certainly expect to be just there on a modern car. But nevertheless, it was one step up from the L, which we'll have a look at now. So on the L, it's saying Cavalier L. Yes, another exciting new car from Vauxhall, the Cavalier L. It offers you a new level of refinement in a new medium car size in two-door or four-door saloon. So basically at this time, we've got the GL and the L. You can have it um, as 
a uh, well two engine choices like it says a 1.6 or a 1.9 and the Cavalier also offered um, it as a two door or four door saloon incidentally while we're talking about it being a two or four door saloon there was all, all sort of like sketches and I think they really meant to do a five door hatchback um, but that body style was never uh, produced on the uh, Mark 1 it goes on to say, consider the interior, for example. You sit back on thick form seats covered with handsome cloth material. The front seats recline and come with inertia rear seat belts. You look at a handsome fascia and easy to read instruments. You find the necessities. Heated rear window, two speed wipers with electric screen wash, hazard warning fl flashes, uh, a full set of fascia warning lights, reverse lights. You find nice, considerate touches everywhere. A centre console with a handy tray for odds and ends, front passenger assist strap, a driver's door mirror, roomy glove box and more. You sink your feet into soft carpeting and you get family room. Two adults in the, row, in the front, two or three kids in the back. All yours as standard equipment. N now consider outside you get a distinctive new front end you get clean aerodynamic styling all round a very responsive 1.6 four speed manual gearbox or optional extra uh, automatic transmission a smooth riding 99 inch wheelbase and a highly advanced independent front suspension servo assisted brakes with discs in the front and drums at the rear and of course you get loads of room in the 13.6 cubic foot boot new cavalier l it's enough to make you want to take the long way home so let's have a look at the pictures as well that goes with this text and there it is showing uh, the Cavalier L, this time a two-door um, in a, a red. And indeed, it's got red seats in there, which look pretty smart, don't they, for a, a base model vehicle. And overall, I think it's, it's not a showy car by any means, but it's relatively an attractive package. And I think it certainly looks a lot more modern than the Mark III um, Cortina it would have been competing against and much more modern than, say, a Morris Marina at the time. And then inside, it actually opens up, actually, to reveal another model, um, the Vauxhall uh, Cavalier uh, GL Coupe, which you can certainly see how that's based on an Opel Manta. So we'll have a look at the text for the Opel Manta as well. Uh, the images go on to the other side to show the interior. And again, a very attractive looking interior. Although I must admit, I'm not too sure about the wood in there. Um, it doesn't really look um, particularly sporty. I don't think of wood as being sporty. If you go back to uh, the Cavalier, uh, GL Saloon. I think that looks like it looks a more sportier interior than this Cavalier GL Coupe. But nevertheless, let's read the text and see what it's got to say for itself. So the Cavalier GL Coupe, a very sporting proposition. First, because you get all the Cavalier L and GL equipment and more. Second, because you get it all in one of the sportiest looking Vauxhalls ever. Sit in the driver's seat, grab the soft grip, four spoke steering wheel, look around you at the handy driver's doormat pocket, and the stylish continental armrests, and the wood veneered inserts exiting the doors, and notice particularly the black rollover bar. Now step outside, notice the extra wide tyres and the extra wide sports wheels and the functional front end spoiler, the easy opening rear quarter windows, and of course, the smart all around coupe styling. Drive Cavalier GL Coupe, that's when you feel the instant response of its powerful 1.9 litre engine, the preciseness of its rack and pinion steering, the steadiness of its independent front suspension, wide track and front anti-roll bars. Cavalier GL Coupe. If you like the way it looks 
you'll love the way it goes. Then on the final back page, it's showing the, the specifications. Like I say, two engine choices. You could have that 1584cc four cylinder engine or the 1897cc four cylinder engine. The clutch was either a manual a four speed or an automatic three speed. And then it tells you about the suspension, steering, etc., which you can, of course, pause. Uh, the video at any time if you want to read all of this i won't go through everything it's talking about the electrics and you know the equipment you actually got on each model and then it's talking about the heating and ventilation the fuel capacity which is 11 gallons and the general information further down it's showing the curb weights on the different models the touring data and the dimensions before finally it shows us the all important color schemes uh, several different colors on the l cardinal red polo white pastel beige pastel blue signal yellow which of course would have been on the front car uh, signal red which would have been on the l uh, monza blue metallic amber gold metallic lime green metallic and i do believe those colors are also for the gl uh, the only difference, of course, is that I have a cloth seat or velour seat in different colours. And then it goes on to give you the date, September 1975. So what else can we say? Well, we can, I can give you a, a glimpse into the prices. So uh, £1,975, you could have got that 1600L to the top of the range um, uh, coupe um, 1.9 would have been 2707 pounds so how did it do against its main rival the ford cortina mark III? well at launch it was tested so that gives us a glimpse how it matched up it was tested by what car um, and it received a much higher rating than the Ford Cortina Mark III. It was also tested against the Morris Marina and again it got a much higher rating. Now a lot to do with that rating was Vauxhall was very clever. They launched this car just at the right time. Uh, the Mark III Cortina was becoming an aging car by this by this time the mark IV uh, cortina wasn't it was probably less than a year but it still wasn't available at this time um, and i think in most if not all regards the cavalier was a better car than the mark III cortina it looked more modern it had a nicer interior it had better handling the cortina was a great comfortable car but it didn't have the handling of this Cavalier which is unusual we we often forget about Vauxhall it's everything's about Ford isn't it when we're looking at older cars and kind of like prices reflect this at this time I think Vauxhall was putting out a better vehicle obviously that battle continued for a long time I think now uh, both Vauxhall and Ford have both said we're not building any more saloon cars which is sad because I think these are far better packages than today's bland SUVs but of course that's a different story but please do let me know in the comments which do you think was a better car this Mark 1 Vauxhall Cavalier or the Mark 3 Ford Cortina so in conclusion a great car However, it never actually outsold the Ford Cortina, so in that way, Ford did win. It never actually even outsold the Morris Marina, and, you know, there's lots of different views on the Marina, of course, which is a shame. But this was kind of like Vauxhall's resurgence, in a way. Um, they really didn't have the budget of Ford, and this really did help them uh, build a better model. And, of course... There were many different versions of the Cavalier to come. Thank you so much for watching Quarterlight today. There'll be many brochures, uh, brochure reviews in the near future. So please do like and subscribe and we'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.